in lesson five, we're going to be looking at the um, idea of intervals once more, but we're also going to be looking at this um, way that musicians make music sound more interesting. In fact, if we did not include what we're going to be talking about in music, music would sound pretty boring. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get into lesson five. As always, thank you for one, just working with me, working so hard. Thank you for the phone calls and the emails and the class dojos. Please keep sending them. I'm here to help you. Um, without you, I don't really have a whole lot that I can do. I am a teacher because I'm working for you. So please continue to ask questions, continue to uh, seek help, and I will do my best to find those answers for you. Accidentals, this is what we're talking about. Without accidentals, we do not have very exciting music. So when we are looking at accidentals, we're looking at how do they apply to music intervals. So last lesson, we talked about what is an interval. We talked about what they look like. We talked about what they might sound like. But in this lesson, we're gonna be looking more at how our intervals changed um, by these things called accidentals. Can we identify them orally with our ear and can we identify them visually with our sight? And then can we start to use those accidentals and interpret those accidentals as musicians might, moving from the idea of just being a student of music to being someone who actually is a musician. And so with that, let's go ahead and just quickly review. An interval is the distance between two pitches and so here I have two pitches and I'm looking at what is the distance between those two pitches. Intervals are based on scales and a scale is just an organized sequence of notes. Sequence means ordered and predictable. And so here I have something going on down here and let's see that I start on this line note. Eventually I'm gonna have another line note and another line note, but because music is predictable and because we're talking about a sequence of ordered and predictable notes, then I'm going to have a space note between these two line notes. And if I had one space note, then I'm gonna have another space note, line, space, line, space. And I want you also notice that if we were to add our names of our notes to this, we also see a predictability and we also see order. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Sounds like a scale to me. Also sounds like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, which is exactly what it is. And you'll notice that one Do and the other Do have the same letter name. And then if we add the degrees of our scale, then we get eight different pitches. So again, intervals are based on an organized sequence of notes. They're based on the scale. And what we're looking at, just so we can get an idea is, let's say that I wanna know the distance from this note to this note. And we actually did this in a previous video. Um, and what I'm trying to figure out is not only what is the distance, but what is this interval called? from C to E. And the next two videos, that's really what we're gonna be looking at is what, how do we identify the intervals and then what are they called and how can we understand them with our ear and understand them by what we see. Now, before we do that, we need to also get into our discussion of the piano. This is the first time that I've shown you the keyboard on the piano, so let's just quickly go over a few things. The first thing I want you to see is that the piano is grouped by two black keys, three black keys, two black keys. And if you can remember that it goes two, three, two, then you can find any note on the piano. But let's, let's focus on this note C. And so if I know that C is going to be directly to the left of that first set of black keys, then I can find it anywhere I go, okay? Now you should be able to figure out the rest of them, but I'm not gonna go into that. 
I just want you to know where that C is because that connects to our lesson. Let's say that you don't have um, the ability to use a computer or you don't have the ability to print something out. Well, you can create your own. This person went ahead and um, took pieces of white paper and black construction paper and then labeled it and now they have their own keyboard. And again, we have the same idea of two and three. And then over here, if we follow that pattern, then that would be two again. <clears throat> so I, earlier I talked about why music is so interesting and without this thing that we're gonna talk about, music would be quite boring. And the answer is, um, we're talking about accidentals. Now an accidental has a very special job in music. And the ans what an accidental does is it changes the pitch of a note, a half step. So I'm not going to go into the idea of half step, whole step in this video. That's going to be the next video. But in this one, I just want you to know that an accidental changes the pitch of a note. That's all I want you to know. Okay. Um, if you can remember that, then you're going to be fine. An accidental changes the pitch of the note and it can go up or it can go down. And these are our two, these are our two symbols that we use in music. And we're going to talk about what those two symbols are and we're going to see how they're used in music. So the first one is called a sharp. And a sharp actually raises the pitch of a note a half step. So here we have C. And so C might sound like this. But what would it what would it sound like if I raised it a half step? And how would I write that? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. So if I go ahead and I write that in my music, let's extend these lines first. And I go ahead and I write that in my music. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my sharp sign in front. And then I'm going to write my note. In this case, my note's going to be C sharp. And it's going to sound like this. Here's my original C. And then I raise it a half step. That's going to be C sharp. <clears throat> so I'm actually, what I'm doing on the piano is I'm actually playing this next black key. So here's C. Here's C sharp. And you can see it right there. Okay, so that's what a sharp does. Now, the next thing that we need to ask ourselves is what does the other one do? And the answer to that is it actually does the opposite. The flat, which is what this is called, lowers the pitch a half step. So again, here's my piano, and here's B, and I know that that's B because these are my two black keys. C would be right here. Right before C would be then B going down. And then let's label the rest of my notes. So there's my A, B, C, D, and E. Let's say that I have this note B, and it sounds like this. And I want to play B flat, which is how I would say it. What I would do is I would then, I would write my pitch and then I would put the flat sign in front and I would flat this note B a half step. So I go B half step down, B flat. And what that would look like on the piano is if I were to play B, then I would flat it down to B flat to play B flat. So it would be B 
B flat. Okay, so we gone we have gone over uh, sharps and flats, and so before we uh, go away, let's just quickly review an interval is the distance between two pitches. Interviews, intervals are based on scales, and scales are organized sequences of notes. And because of that, we have an order and predictability to it. And the last thing is we've talked about that an accidental alters the pitch of a note. And in this case, we have two different kinds of alterations. We have our we have our sharp that raises the pitch of a note, and then we have our flat that lowers the pitch of a note. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. And I hope that um, I tried to make this video shorter because the last ones are really, really long. And so I thought I'm gonna make shorter videos um, so that we can get through the material maybe quicker, keep you more engaged. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Until next time, goodbye.